What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Real Reefing TV and today I'm going to tell you the three reasons why you have algae in your tank or maybe why I have algae in my tank? Anyways, this video is going to give you the, the theoretical science or maybe not that science-y um, <laughs> kind of view into why algae is kind of taking over your tank and if you're struggling with that stick through this video you'll have a great idea of why the algae is growing in your tank so that you can come up with a plan of attack uh, to get that algae knocked out so reason number one is that you have poor tank husbandry this is like lazy reefer syndrome right like LRS I think that's the term for it you go to like the doc like you just you, you walk into the doctor's clinic you're like Hi, Doc. How you doing? Good. How was you? Okay. So you're fine? Okay. Just... I'll just get comfortable. So what brings you in today? It all started three months ago. I've started to notice patches of it showing up here and there. Okay. Interesting. So tell me, when was the last time that, uh, that you've replaced your filter socks? My filter socks? I, I don't know, I, I probably haven't changed them in about three weeks. But they're not overflowing yet, so uh, I don't see a problem with that. Okay, write that down. And when was the last time that you've done a water change? Hey, I heard you don't have to do water changes as long as you're, as long as you, I heard you don't need to do water changes. And your skimmer? Yeah, when's the last time you've cleaned your skimmer? My skimmer? Well, I empty it out every now and then. At least, you know, at least it's still skimming something out. You have it cleaned the neck. Okay. I think I know what's wrong. You have lazy reefer syndrome. I have what? Lazy reefer syndrome? Is there anything you can prescribe me? I'm going to write your prescription. And it's called... Get off your lazy bucks of silly. So, if you suffer from lazy reefer syndrome, probably a pretty good reason why you have algae in your tank. And that's basically this, like, you, you, you don't replace your filter socks when you're supposed to. You let them like just wait and then they overflow for like a week or two and you're like, ah, I get to it tomorrow, right? Um, you may have lazy reefer syndrome. If your skimmer cup runs over on a consistent basis, you may have lazy reefer syndrome. If there is a inch thick of skimmate gick on the inside of your skimmer neck, you may have lazy reefer syndrome. If you can't remember the last time you did a water change, you may have lazy reefer syndrome, or like what I like to call LRS. If your GFO is harder than a rock, you may have lazy reefer syndrome. Reason number two, you have algae dominating your tank is that you have too many fish. Either that or not enough biofiltration, meaning rock, sand, uh, ceramic media, whatever biofiltration you have in your tank, you don't have enough of it to handle the bio load in your tank. And so if you, what, takes, what it takes to feed your fish and keep them healthy and happy is too much bio load for your tank, you're gonna to have too many nutrients, nitrate and, and phosphate, and that's what's gonna pollute your tank. It's gonna give the algae the fuel that it needs to thrive and survive, and that's why you're gonna have algae overrunning your tank. So remember not to add too many fish. Uh, there's you know, no great way to know when you've hit your tank's limit, but it's important to watch and monitor and go slowly as you're adding fish. Which brings me to my next point, point number three, the third reason why 
your tank has an algae problem is an imbalance in the ecosystem that is this small box of water that holds all of these um, animals. And so if you add too many fish too fast, you're gonna have an imbalance because you're going to need to feed those fish. Too quick, too fast, also just by them being in there and breathing, they're releasing ammonia, that requires extra, um, you know, it requires an extra load on the bio, uh, on the biofiltration on, in your tank, and that bacteria may not be able to keep up, right? And so what ends up happening is, is you have, again, too much nitrate, too much phosphate, and you're gonna end up polluting your tank. Same thing goes for, oh, well, I haven't really been feeding that much lately, and so I really wanna kinda of catch up, and so I'm gonna be dumping a lot more food in, you know, just to really kinda of get my fish eating a lot more and get them more healthy, and that sounds great in theory, but if you do it too quickly, again, your biofiltration doesn't have time to catch up. And even if it does catch up, it's converting that ammonia to nitrate to nitri nitrite to nitrate, and you're gonna end up with that fuel for the algae. So it's important to do it in a way that's going to um, just be slow and methodical, and you're going to be able to keep up with the tank husbandry, right? You can add a little bit more GFO, you start testing, you notice these levels rising, you can start to um, you know, understand your tank and what it needs. Getting the, the nutrients levels down to where they need to be, and the way to do that is with nutrient export methods. Those are things like your filter socks, your skimmer, your GFO, your bio pellets, the refugium, anything you can do. And, there, and it might not be you know, one silver bullet. You may have to kind of combine a culmination of different nutrient export methods, whatever suits your needs and the way that you like to run your tank and whatever your tank likes. That's a big part of it too. So that's it guys, you either have lazy reefer syndrome, you have too many fish, or it's an imbalance and you're doing things too quickly. Either way, it provides fuel for the algae to consume. Algae needs one of three things. It either needs sunlight, water, and a fuel source. So either nitrate or phosphate. And if it has those three items in any capacity, you can end up with algae in your tank. And if you let it get out of hand, ladies and gentlemen, you'll end up like this guy and uh, your tank will be overrun. Hopefully this has helped you guys understand a little bit more on why the algae grows in our tanks and what kind of things can set off that chain reaction that starts the, uh, the kind of the problems that we create for ourselves. And, and if it gave you any sort of value, just go ahead and, and, and tickle that like button for me, I'd appreciate it. Smash it if you so desire, you know, whatever, stomp it, you know, do whatever you gotta do. Um, but uh, let me know in the comments below what nutrient exports you guys like to employ. I'm gonna link up in the description below some of the things that I like to run on my tank to keep those nutrients in check so you guys can check those out. And then finally, if you haven't already done it, subscribe to this channel. If you're all the way through this video, obviously you found it important. So subscribe for more information just like this one today. You'll get to see more of this tank, more of my smiling face, and, um, and the nano build that I have going on in the office. And so y'all already know what it is. Keep it salty, keep it real, y'all. Y'all know what it is. Peace.